Hi everyone, I've just had an order come in for a jam jar posy for a customer. Lots and lots of lovely flowers blooming in the cutting garden and I thought it'd be nice to show you what I'm putting together today for that order and also just make up some extra jam jar posies for the stall as well because it's Friday and coming up to the weekend it's nice to have some jam jar posies ready for customers there as well. So we're going to talk through what is blooming, talk about a little bit about conditioning, if anything needs anything in particular, and um, put together a really nice arrangement for this customer. So in a minute, I'll show you what I've cut today. Um, these have all been cut and conditioning in buckets since early morning before the sun came out. And I've just separated them into jars of water now so that you can just see them a bit more clearly rather than being all together in a bucket. Um, but lots and lots of lovely things to work with. So let's go and have a look. So first up today I've got some of this lovely salvia. This is annual salvia and you might know it as clary sage as well. Comes in this really vivid royal blue colour, get it in pinks like this and also whites as well. And over here we've got some lovely white nigella. It's really beautiful, look at that. Very pretty. We've got some snapdragons. They're just the first ones coming into bloom just now in the garden. We've got some nice ones there. This beautiful apricota cosmos. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? That's a firm favorite of mine now to grow every year after I tried it last year. This is a really easy to grow perennial that you can use in jar arrangements. Great for being a filler and it's called Fever Few. So definitely recommend trying to grow that from seed if you haven't already. Down here, we've got a good mix of sweet peas, just to add some super scent to these jam jar posies. And up the back here, look at this status. It's a very gorgeous blue color as well. And we've got some apricot status here as well. Fantastic for drying status as well. And it's all just starting to come out in the garden now. Status and cosmos are always later flowers for me. They'll start getting underway now and keep going to the first frost. This is a beautiful annual phlox. So I've got my perennial phlox out in the garden as well and I've got my annual phlox too. I'm still working on getting longer stems of this so I keep pinching it back and hopefully that will mean towards the end of the season we'll get longer stems. But just now, I'm just making up jam jar posies so it's perfect for that and it's very pretty. Over here, we've got some Achillea the Pearl and some white Achillea as well. And around here, we've got some corn flowers, purple, whites, pinks. Here we've got some lovely docus. And we've got some Ami Magis as well. Here we go. Something I like adding into arrangements is herbs. There's so many lovely ones that you can use. And this is marjoram here. And it smells absolutely fantastic. So along with the sweet peas, that's gonna be really nice in the arrangement. So over here, you'll be able to see, I've got some Nigella seed pods. And these are fantastic to use in arrangements. You can cut them in the green like this before they go really brown. And they'll last indefinitely. They're in perfect condition just now. They haven't started to split to disperse their seeds. So that's a perfect time for cutting them. So this is what your nigella here forms after it's finished flowering. So that's why I really like nigella because it's got those lovely flowers for using in arrangements. But if you miss some of them, um, like I was away on holiday and they were fully out and started to form seed pods, then you can still use them after that. Over here, I've got a bucket of greenery that I'm going to add into my arrangement. So this is Physocarpus Darts Gold and it's a really lovely colour to use. Over here, we've got lots of Aplerium. Again, that's a really fantastic foliage to use, but you need to keep sowing it throughout the season to make sure that you've got a regular supply of it. Over here, I've got some privet as well. Holds up really, really well in arrangements, so it's a good one to use too. The Serinthi, fantastic for using in arrangements. And over here, we've got some cloud grass and some Breeza Maxima. So that's all the ingredients I'm going to be using today. Lots and lots to choose from. So let's have a little chat about conditioning. A lot of these don't need anything special. So things like your nigella and your salvia and your snapdragons, your cosmos, your status. All you need to do is take your water in a bucket, 
out to the flower patch with you or into the garden. Cut your flowers straight into it at a good time of day when the sun isn't too strong. So early in the morning or later in the evening is a good time. And then make sure you've stripped all the lower leaves because you don't want any leaves sitting below the water level. You just want the stems in there. So strip any of those off and then pop them into buckets and condition them for a good several hours or overnight, ideally. Now, these are all just in jam jars. Remember to show you just now the individual flowers. They were in buckets of water before. Sometimes some things don't react very well to being cut and you think, oh, they're not going to last. So an example of this is Cerinthi. It can be a little bit awkward. It can feel a little bit floppy when you first go and cut it in the garden and you think, oh, I'm not going to be able to use that. It's going to wilt. But actually it just needs some time. So just fill your buckets with water and give it a really good condition for several hours. I would say overnight, ideally for Cerinthi and then the stems will harden up for you. You have to be careful of your foliage as well because sometimes that can be a little bit wilty. Things like the physocarpus earlier in the season when the leaves were new, it would have been far too early then to use them. They would have just wilted, but now they're much stronger, more mature leaves. So they'll hold up well in a vase. You can slip the stems. So at the bottom there, you can put a vertical slit up that stem for about half an inch to an inch and then that helps it to soak up the water. Another trick for anything that is a little bit wilty um, in some of your foliage and um, some things like roses as well respond quite well to it, hellebores, is to just pop the bottom few centimetres of your stem into some newly boiled water for 30 seconds, take it out and put it back into your bucket of water to condition. And this is called searing the stem and just helps with conditioning as well for anything that's a little bit wilty. So let's get started making this jar arrangement. So over here, I have got my jar and this is a Dow Egbert's coffee jar, which is what I like to use. There are two pound jars and fantastic for making a fairly large arrangement that can sit on somebody's table. Just that little bit bigger than my smaller stall ones, which are in standard jam jar sizes. So you can see the difference there. This is a standard jam jar and this is a two pound jar here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my nice foliage. So let's have a look and see what we're going to add. So for this one, I am going to use some Buclerium today. So as you can see, there is no leaves on this stem here. They've already been removed and stripped when I was cutting them from the flower patch. So that's good. It's not going to be below the water line. So we're just going to take our snips and cut it to what we think will be the right size and then pop it into our jar. And then choose another one and do the same thing again. So I'm just going to keep adding this. You're building a framework at this stage for your flowers to sit nicely into. We'll take some of that nice piece of carpus, cut it to size, pop it in two. And I've just got an empty bucket I can put some of my offcuts into over there. I think we'll take another one of those. This one here is maybe a bit low, so I'm just going to remove that lower leaf there. Pop it in. And actually that one down there is looking a little low as well, so I'll just take that off. So I'm going to pop a bit of Cerinthi in next. And it's got a nice sturdy stem on it now. It's been conditioned long enough that it's definitely a lot sturdier than when it was first cut. We'll get another one there. Using odd numbers of stems often works well. So threes, fives, sevens, they all go quite well together. And once you've built your framework of foliage, you can start to add some fillers. So I think that's not bad at all. So I think what I want to add next is probably some of this lovely yarrow achelia. Um, it's a nice filler. Then cut it to size. There's nothing down the stem, so it's fine to add in. It holds up nicely in a vase as well. And Achille is very good for drying too. So if you've got a lot of it and you're not going to use all of it in your garden, you can try cutting some for some nice dried flowers to use later in the year. 
So I'm going to add three stems of this and then I'll add some Achillea the Pearl as well. So this is Achillea the Pearl. It's absolutely beautiful. Lots of lovely dainty white flowers branching off of it. So I'll cut to that to size. And then in a minute, I'll show you what it's looking like from over the top so that you can get a good idea. So next I'm going to add some privet as well. Fantastic foliage to use. Great because you can use it as a hedge and then you can also use it for cutting from as well. So that's what I've done. I've grown a hedge around the flower patch and then I use this for cutting from. A bit more of this lovely Achillea. Then I'm looking forward to putting some nice flowers in this in a minute. I'm going to add another bit of physocarpus. As you go around, you'll be able to see where the gaps are and what needs a little bit more. Another bit of Bapplerium. There we go. Right, I'll show you that from overhead so that you can see what it looks like. So that's what we've started off with just now. We've got our Bapplerium, we've got our physocarpus, Darts Gold, our Achillea the Pearl, our Achillea that's in white over here, some Cerinthi, and we have got our Privet as well that is just popped in there too. So now we might add some flowers. So I'm going to add some Status next. I just love the vivid blue colour, it's very, very pretty. So I think actually this one here is looking right sides without having to cut it at all. So I'm just going to add that around the back and then just snip off a little bit here. Status is a cut and come again flower. So if you have cut it in the flower batch down at the base of the plant, it will come back again with more flowers for you. And they tend to get taller as the season goes on. So you might find that they're quite short to begin with. And then they start to get a little bit longer as the season goes on. So that's our lovely status there. I'm sure we can manage to put in a few more bits in a minute. There's another bit there. I'm going to add that in around the side. Just there. And then this bit here. It might need cutting. It looks like it might be the right size. Oh, it's going to be okay actually. So I didn't need to cut that bit after all. Now we're going to have a look and see what else we're going to put in. I'm going to put in this absolutely beautiful annual phlox. I just love the colour of this. So I think that's going to have been cut to the right size as well for this jam jar actually. So it's just going to sit in there. Let me show you that. So this jar arrangement is going to be all about combining whites and blues and purples in together. And um, it's going to have some sweet peas and salvia in next and then some nigella I think. So this is salvia and it comes on these lovely bracts with these lovely flowers at the top. And you need to make sure that you strip all these little bits off that are gonna be under the water line. So I'll just get my bucket here and show you. You just can pull down like that and then they just all come off. And then you've just left the flowers at the top and then this will be your clear stem to go in the water. So we can cut that one to size, it's a little bit long. And then pop that in. Salvia is a good one for drying as well. It's long lasting. So there's a few extra bits there that I'm just going to tear off and put in my bucket. Salvia will give you a second flush as well if you cut it back in the garden. And last week I did a video all about salvia and how you can grow it from seed right through, watching it through the stages of growth right through to harvesting. So if you'd like to find out more about this lovely flower, then you can tune into that video. So I'm just going to pop a salvia down the front here like that. And then I'll show you just now what that's looking like. There we go. We've got that lovely salvia next to the status and the bapplerium. You can see some more around here there at the front as well. So that's very pretty. So next what I'd like to add is I'd like to add some nigella. Very pretty. Now with nigella you quite often get these little side branches and they're just going to get in the way when I'm arranging so I'm just going to pull them off. Very easy to peel off and this ferny foliage as well. You can just get rid of that so that you've got a nice clear stem. There 
And we'll pop that in there. So that's just a bit of white to break up the blue. And I'll choose another one. Sometimes they're quite long side branches and if you're making a smaller jam jar posy then you can keep them for that. So I might put that back in water in case it's big enough to go in the smaller jam jar. I think this one here is going to be a little bit too small and it's too low down on the stem to keep it. So we'll just put that one aside. And we'll just get this here in the back. And then I think we need another one. So again, that's two in there just now, just to balance it out. It's nice to use threes or fives. They look nice together. There we go, that's looking really nice. Now I think we need some sweet peas in there as well. So we've got some lovely stem sweet peas. There we go, that's a beautiful one there. I just think you can't beat the scent of sweet peas and if you're making a jam jar posy for someone, it just really adds to it to have that scent. Got some lovely lilac sweet peas as well. That's a really nice thing about sweet peas is that you can grow them in so many lovely colors. And they're nice long stems, these ones. They started out quite short in the season um, and then they've got longer, which is good. I think, again, that was probably the water, the lack of it in June. Um, and even with the constant watering in the garden, it probably just wasn't enough for getting good stem length. And now it seems to be improving. So that's good with all that rain we've been having. So to keep these flowers looking at their best, you're going to want to change your water every couple of days and remove any faded flowers. So jam jar arrangements, they will have some flowers that will last ages. So things like your status, your salvia, your buclearium, um, cornflowers, they'll all last a really long time. But things like your sweet peas and your nigella will go over a bit quicker. So you will be able to just remove those faded flowers and then you'll be able to enjoy the arrangement as the other ones continue to bloom. And you might have some buds in there that are going to open up as well. So you should get a good week, even 10 days of um, enjoyment out of your vase arrangement, providing that you keep it out of direct sunlight, away from the fruit bowl, change the water, and you can reslit the stems again at the bottom and yeah, remove any faded flowers and then you'll be able to enjoy it for a good period of time. So this is how it's looking, really nice. We've got that nice white nigella in there, which just breaks it up when you've used a lot of the stronger blue colors. And we've got our sweet peas down here. You can see some sweet peas there. So a few gaps, so we'll probably keep adding a little bit more to them. And I'll have a look and see what I'd like to add next. I think maybe get some docus in there. We haven't got any of that yet. Got some ami actually I found first, so I think I'll pop that in. I love ami. But the first flush is definitely just coming towards the end now. So that's when you need to be succession sewing to make sure that you've got some more coming through. I know that I've got Ami Visnaga coming through in the garden, so that'll be nice to see in a few weeks. Docus comes in different colours. It can come in this white colour, which I'm using here, or it can come in light pinks. And also you get more burgundy types. You get Docus Dara and Docus Purple Kisses, which are lovely. Um, these are white ones I'm using here. Just wondering whether to slit that a little bit more at the bottom because I think it's just a little bit big. So we'll pop it back in. Sometimes things don't sit perfectly when you first fit them in. It's absolutely fine to cut them again and pop them in. You can fiddle around with it um, until you're happy that it's looking just right. Remember to look at it from all angles because sometimes you might have missed a little bit. Um, so I can tell here that I think it just needs a little bit of something here. And then this leaf here is annoying me a little bit, so I'm going to remove that. So the last thing that I'm going to add is I'm going to add some of the marjoram 
for a bit of scent and just a tiny little touch of pink. So it's mostly blues and whites here, but I think just a little touch of pink might be nice. So I'm gonna add that in. Probably just put three in there and then that'll be perfect. So the last one going in here, I've already got one on the other side. I think I'll put one over here. There we go. And then some grasses as well. So this is this lovely cloud grass. Now it's always a bit difficult to show you on the video what the cloud grass looks like and to really appreciate it, but it's really, really beautiful. So you might just be able to see it there. So we're gonna add that in for a bit of texture. Just slot it in. It's always the last thing that I put in is the grasses. They can tend to be a little bit tricky to put in when you've got other things in there because they've got very wiry stems. So you just have to be quite careful that you can find a place to slot them in. So just adding a couple more of these cloud grasses, one over here, and then I think that'll be the arrangement finished. So that's one there, and then the final one around here. There we go, all done. I'll show you what that looks like now, and we'll clear up and we'll try making another arrangement with some different colors. So the next jar I'm going to be making today is going to be more peaches, whites, pinks, so different colours than the last one that we were doing. So let's get started. So again, in this jar, it's going to be about making a framework first of all. So I am going to get some more Bapilarium here to start off with. Cut that to size. That's a bit of a small branch around there, so we'll take that off. And then I've got some flowering currant foliage as well, which is really good at standing up well in a vase. And I'm just going to slip the stem up vertically there a little bit to help it take up some water. And that's all been conditioning for the last few hours in my bucket. So in with the flowering currant, a few more stems of Buclearium. Which I think are just about the right size. I think I'll take a little bit off this one. There we go. Then I've got some privet here as well that I'm just going to add. Just going to take some lower leaves off this one because I think they'll be below the water line. Put those in around the edge. Get another one there. That's starting to look nice. Got some nice Achillea the Pearl again that I'm going to add in as a nice filler beside that. And then I'm going to add some Fever Few as well. And then I'll show you what that's looking like. So we've got some lovely Fever Few here. Great perennial to grow. I find that it lasts a couple of years and then I have to replace it. Um, so I grow it from seed in the autumn time, get it planted out, and then it provides good flowers for me for two, three years. And then I find that the stems can get a little bit woody, less flowers produced. So I then move on to making some new fever few for the garden from seed again. So a bit more Achillea the Pearl to go on this side. So Achillea the Pearl, Fever Few, and your usual Achillea in its mixed colours. They're all short-lived perennials for me. Same with Sweet William. Um, I can get a good two, three years out of them for flowers and then their quality um, goes down a bit. I don't get as many productive flowering stems, so it's worth just starting from scratch at that point and sowing some new seed for new plants the following years but they're absolutely beautiful. Let's have a look at what it's looking like just now. So that's a really nice framework for our flowers there. You can see we've got the fever few here. 
We have got the lovely Achillea the Pearl there. We have got some privet. We've got our Bapleurium. And we have got our flowering current foliage as well. So let's add some flowers. So I've got some nice apricot cosmos here. So I think we'll add that in next. So you can see that there, very pretty. I'm gonna to have to remove some of the ferny foliage at the bottom there um, because that'll be below the water line. And we'll see if I've cut it to the right size. Yes, that's looking grand there. So we'll see if we can get another one. Here we go, that's another one there. I love Cosmos, there's just so many varieties that you can grow. There's something for everybody. So I'm really hoping that we get some really good ones this year. I think that's maybe just a bit tall, so we'll chop that down to size. And I'll pop that bud in around there because it's nice to have some buds into your flower arrangements so that they can open up over the course of a week and people can enjoy some new flowers coming out. It's got some more cosmos here, so I'll just put that in. And then after I've popped the cosmos in just now, I'm going to add some snapdragons. So we've got some lovely snapdragons here. So these have flowers, so you've got a few out on the bottom of the stem, but you've got more buds opening up at the top. So one last snapdragon going in just now. Put that around here, and then I'll show you what that's looking like. Let's have a look. So we've now got those lovely apricot cosmos in. We have got some lovely snapdragons at different places in the arrangement. So now let's see what else we can add. I think we'll add some status and we'll add some salvia and some nigella. It's difficult to choose your favorite color combinations at this time of year because there's just so many different things that you can put together. So we've just done a nice blue and purple arrangement and now I'm really liking this one that's full of apricots and pinks and whites. So you can decide at the end which is your favorite and you can let me know. Got some nice nigella. It's also difficult to know what your favorite flower is. I have just got too many that I like to choose a favorite, I think. I like them for different things. I like the nigella because they're really unusual. I love the sweet peas because of the scent. I love the apricot cosmos because of the color. I love the status because it dries really well and retains its color when you've dried it. Right, now I think we're gonna put some Dorcas in next because we haven't got any of that in. Dorcas quite often comes with these side branches. These are not mature, so they're likely to wilt and you don't need them. They're gonna get in the way of your vase, so just strip them off. So you've got this nice long stem left. There's a little bit left there. And then cut it to size. There we go. Now look at the colour of this one. This is Docus Dara, absolutely gorgeous colour. So we're gonna put that in as well. I think we're to put that one, maybe round the back up here. So pretty. I think we'll put one more Docus in and then I'll show you what it's looking like again from up above. Right, clear away some of my bits that need to go in the bucket. And then I'll show you. So here we go, we've got a few more additions now. We've got this lovely Dorcas at the front. And over here we've got that lovely Dorcas Dara. We've got some lovely Nigella in. We've got our Salvia down the bottom. So now I think that we are ready for some of our marjoram, our grasses and some sweet peas. 
So this is when the scent's going in. We're gonna put in some marjoram first, and then we'll follow that up with some sweet peas. And then we'll have our grasses, and I'm gonna put some nigella seed pods in in a minute as well. This one I think is not far off the right size. Just a little trim. And the side, and then the last one. We'll grab the other side. There we go. And then we've got some lovely sweet peas left as well. This one's just got one flower out, so it'll last quite well in the bath. A nice pink one. And I've got some more nice white ones. These ones are all cut to a good size, so I don't need to trim them. back here. And then one last one. All right, time for some grasses now, I think. This time we're gonna put in some Brisa Maxima, I think. This is it here, you can see. Let's put some of that in. Slot it into place. There we go. Another one over this side. I think this one might be a bit long actually. Might need to just trim that down a little bit more. Definitely can alter things as you go along again. So if you haven't cut it to quite the right size, that's fine. You can just pull it out and start again. There's another one. Around the front, and then one round the back, and then I've got the last bit of cloud grass left as well, so I think I'll pop that in somewhere too. There we go, and a bit of cloud grass in the middle. I'm going to put this lovely pink nigella in as well because I've forgotten about that. So let's put that in round the front so that we can see it. Mulberry rose nigella. That's looking good. And then we've got these lovely seed pods. There we go. There's a nigella seed pod. We're going to pop that in. And then in a minute you'll be able to see what that looks like. Add another one. Some Nigella seed pods are larger than others. So that's one July summer arrangement all finished, ready to go on the garden gate stall. So I've made up a couple of smaller jam jar posies for the stall as well. So these are just in standard jam jars and they contain a brilliant mix of lots of the shorter stem flowers that I have. And they're always a good mix, these ones. I like to keep them nice and colorful and cheerful for people to come and pick up a smaller posy if they like it. So thanks so much for watching me put these two jar arrangements together today for our customers and for the stall. 
I cannot make my mind up which is my favourite because I do love the purples and blues and whites and greens of this one but then at the same time I'm really loving those apricot cosmos against the fever few and with the bapilarium and the nigel and the others and the grasses just to finish it off. Maybe you can let me know which is your favourite arrangement. In the next few weeks we are going to be having a look at what is happening outside in the flower patch. After a really dry sunny June, which was fantastic, we then have had a really, really wet July. It has rained every single day and we haven't had any sunshine really. It's just been dull days full of rain, which hasn't been ideal for the school holidays and it hasn't been ideal for the flowers either. So things like the sunflowers and dahlias are really suffering because we're needing that sunshine for them to come out. And things like the cosmos and the sweet peas, there's quite a lot of petal damage from the rain so we'll just have to see how things go going into August and we'll maybe talk about as well what can you do if it is raining and you are having to cut flowers for orders because we still have to go out and, and work every day and get these beautiful flowers for our customers and we have to work with what the weather is doing outside so I'll share with you any tips I have for cutting in the rain when you've got no choice and how to try and keep those blooms absolutely beautiful.